right. Stephen. Okay. Yes. All right. So tell me, um, what is the name of this organization yeah. and what is your role? So um, our organization, our charity is called Helpful Housing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been around for about 10 years. And um, our main company uh, builds and develops housing and has been working with the homeless population through our charity called Helpful Housing. Um, I am now the chief program officer of that um, organization. And um, what I've uh, really been working on for the last year and a half about is expanding our partnerships with organizations helping the homeless in different capacities throughout LA County. Um, so we work with at least 50% of the um, homeless services organizations throughout LA County um, in different capacities, primarily obviously in housing, but we collaborate in just so many different ways. Uh, so, I, this is gonna be a loaded question, but tell me, how does the process go for somebody who is looking for housing? Um, there are different territories, otherwise known as service planning areas, mm -hmm. uh, throughout LA County, the spas, there's eight of them. Um, here in Long Beach, California, we're in spa eight. Um, so every spa has a spa lead, and that's an organization that is designated as the organization where folks can go to and begin initiating asking for help if they're experiencing homelessness. Mm -hmm. Here in Long Beach, it'd be the multi-services center. Mm -hmm. So once they go there, they uh, get their initial assessment for CES, the coordinated entry system. So they do the assessment and that matches them to a appropriate program for their specific needs. Um, and that'll cover that, the needs related to whether they have mental health issues, whether they have medical issues, um, whether they have um, they need employment, if it's going to be a long-term subsidy that they're going to need, or only short-term assistance. So typically from there, they'll get matched to a social program, but also a housing program if they're experiencing homelessness. Hmm. So sometimes um, some folks are in more um, vulnerable situations than others, and if they're in a more vulnerable situation, typically they'll be prioritized a little bit higher than somebody who is experiencing homelessness but isn't um, in as dire need as someone else. Mm -hmm. So typically, if it's, it's a more vulnerable situation, they'll be matched to hopefully a shelter environment, um, especially if they have children in their custody, they tend to be prioritized a little bit higher because of the, the, the minors. Um, but from there, they'll be in, in some sort of interim housing. Are you familiar with the Housing First? No, tell me about that. Okay. I've heard of it a lot. Yeah, so Housing First, there's two terms, Housing First and Harm Reduction. So Housing First is the overarching umbrella idea behind most organizations in Los Angeles County that are helping the homeless today. Meaning that everybody, no matter where they are in life, deserves housing. It's Housing First and Harm Reduction meant you might be struggling with something, but that's fine, you can still come in. Or while you're here in the bridge housing, if you decide to go out, without naming any names, you and I just were at another facility today that had a little bit more strict rules surrounding addiction and sobriety. And that is typically outside of the Housing First and Harm Reduction model because um, not that there's anything wrong with that, there's different programs for everything, but the, one of the other main differences is if you went out during the day and you came back and now you're under the influence of something, you're not turned away. You don't lose your, your room or your bed because harm reduction means come into a safe environment, we'll continue working with you rather than saying, you have to stay out there tonight in the cold or whatever it is and, and hopefully you just fix your problem on your own. So harm reduction means we're going to work with you through everything as long as you're not obviously being too disruptive or violent um, to your neighbors, which we really, I almost never saw any of that at the facility because of the harm reduction model. It's like you're not a bad guy, you can come in. So that's, that's, the main difference. that's another main difference between um, the traditional models and harm reduction. What, you mentioned some of the, they may be experiencing some disabilities and such. Sure. What, um, does, does case management services go to their dwelling to yeah. provide services or how does that work? Are yeah, they, every single person, whether it's permanent or 
um, short-term subsidy as long as they're receiving the assistance, they're also receiving case management. Mm -hmm. So these, these are expensive programs if you think about it because it's helping someone with their housing costs but also the support staff. Mm -hmm. And so we work very closely with the case managers of all the different organizations who um, we are housing their clients. And so oftentimes we as the housing provider know when a client needs um, assistance sooner than the, their case manager knows mm. because we are with them all the time. So we, under, we, we, we oftentimes know when um, someone has had some sort of incident or um, is actually expressing that they need assistance or sometimes folks just up in and disappear, unfortunately, for different reasons. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes because we're housing them, we know and it's up to us to actually notify their agency and let them know that, hey, you might want to look into your client, they, they might need assistance, or we haven't seen them in a couple weeks, which is, you know, odd. So um, it, it's really a great partnership in that sense. Wow. So. Hi, just got a lot of questions from that, <laughs> from that answer. Um, sure. First I'd ask, let's say somebody is in custody. Yes. And they were just beginning the application process yeah. for housing. If they do some county time, are they still in the process or do they lose like their spot? You know, and so that's not, that's a good question. And that's not actually even determined really by us most of the time. It's, it's typically determined by the agency that's helping them because um, we might know that someone's gone missing, we just we haven't seen that person in a long time. Um, but um, often an indicator is oftentimes the, the, the tenants pay a portion of the rent. Mm -hmm. um, and if that stops, that's pretty much a good indicator to us that that person's not around. Mm -hmm. So that's when we will notify our partners and let them look into the matter. And if they, if they find that somebody is either incapacitated due to medical issues, or if they're unfortunately incarcerated for whatever reason, um, they, we let them make the determination. Sometimes the, they know that it's um, a very short stay um, in, in custody, mm -hmm. in which case they still have their apartment. Mm -hmm. But if it's going to be absolutely long term, most of the programs do have a limit to how long they can actually pay for a unit if the person is not coming back for a while, and um, that's obviously because they need to open up that funding for another person. Mm -hmm. But um, another thing that we do that most housing providers don't do is um, some agencies offer um, to hold the unit, so they'll pay for the unit while they're waiting for their client to become ready for, for whatever reason. It, it is sometimes a lengthy process, mm -hmm. but oftentimes um, we will wait um, longer than most people will wait for somebody to get into housing with us. Um, but if for whatever reason they don't make it and that apartment gets taken by another person who needs it, um, the door is still open for other units. So we try to work with them. And I think that's one of the beauties of, of, of working with folks who are justice impacted is because we still will work with folks. Um, but it takes a strong partnership and relationship also with the with the organizations that we're working with. Mm, okay. Yeah. So you mentioned a, a lengthy process. Yes. What is the estimated amount of time that somebody would meet with case management services, they reach out to you, and mm -hmm. now they're beginning the process? From that time to them being giving their key to yeah. their place. Well, so, so I guess in, in just to set up your particular scenario, they've already been matched to a program, they've got their housing subsidy in place, now they just need to find housing. The, our partners reach out to us and from application to move in, mm -hmm. um, it, it, you know it's really funny, it, it kind of varies, but we're, it's, if I had to give just a blanket um, average, it's about two weeks or more. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, in my mind I've always thought like months. Our partners, case management, bring someone to see an apartment or multiple units, they like the apartment, they put in the application, and sometimes I've seen cases where they've disappeared for over a month, month and a half, and these are extreme cases, but it starts as simply as the phone doesn't work anymore, and their case manager can't find them. See, if they're not in a shelter situation, and they're on the streets, 
just finding them to get them to sign their lease and help them move in, that's a challenge for case management too, for our partners. Right. Um, and or sometimes we've had unfortunate situations where the agency actually helped them acquire the unit, but then due to medical issues, they were never able to move in mm. and, and have to, to give up the unit because they were just going to be in the hospital for too long. Mm -hmm. But I always let them know that they've been approved to rent and so they can come back when, when, they're, when they're ready. When, when, when they're ready. Uh, what are some other challenges that you experience just overall with housing in general? Well, I mean, you know, I think, I think we're unique and it's obviously because of our experience working with the homeless population in that we understand the challenges. Um, but they're still a little, they're still a little challenging, and we just have to work with that. Mm -hmm. um, so typically, what happens is um, if we do become aware of an incident, um, our first uh, thing to do, or my first thing, uh, is to contact the agency that's helping that individual, let them know what's happening, and let them know that it's it's probably a good time to to, to pay a visit and, and and address the issue. Mm -hmm. And some of these things are not unique at all to the homeless population you know then you get everything that any landlord gets noise complaints parties things of that nature and that's just that's just part of the territory they're living in their home mm -hmm. but they've got neighbors you know so you have to make everybody happy so um but yeah the, the more serious issues where it's behavioral that is where again i say we we kind of take a step back we notify the agency that's working with them and let them do their job hmm. okay yeah. so what is something that you would like to see in, in with regard to housing and LA County? Mm -hmm. What are some things that you would like to see in the future? Uh, you know, as I mentioned, we have we really rely on our partners and the organizations that are helping um, the tenants, but there is oftentimes high turnover in, in, in these organizations. Yeah, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you have a um, situation where a tenant needs ongoing um, attention and then that uh, case manager or social worker leaves their position for whatever reason then it's almost sometimes like starting from zero and just and, 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 and I think that's you know there's no easy solution to that sometimes people get promoted and they leave or sometimes people leave for other ventures um, but that's one thing where I think um, having more communication with the entities that don't tend to um, have high turnover rate or at least having more communication where it, it's easier to pick up where someone left off mm -hmm. because when someone leaves that position you're really just hoping that the next person understands where that person left off right. so that's that's one thing mm -hmm. that is I imagine a challenge for any industry um, in any company but when it's human services it's just a little bit more complex mm -hmm. because you're dealing with human issues that oftentimes live with a person. Mm -hmm. Well, friends, um, so this is the end of part two of this interview. Like I mentioned, I'm going to add into the show notes um, all the information that people might be interested in about our organization and as well as Melissa's organization and how uh, they can learn more about that. So again, thank you for watching the SWG show. And until next time, bye friends.